They thought it was a Halloween prank. It was anything but. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Cornelius Hodges. Viewer discretion is advised. At the time of this case, Cornelius Hodges is 30 years old and he is living in the North Omaha, Nebraska area. His parents were Kenneth and Diane Perry and they had their own home and then about three miles from their home is where Cornelius was living in his own apartment. Cornelius has always been known as a, a fighter. He, uh, when he was about two years old, he was diagnosed with a severe kidney disease in which uh, one of his kidneys had to be removed. This would create um, developmental disabilities in him, but he always found a way to fight through it. His mom said that he was just an incredibly strong young man. He never gave up on anything. And she would say that Cornelius was their angel. He was their miracle child. By 2016, Cornelius is now a full-grown adult. He's 30 years old and he is six foot three. He is, uh, uh, you know, quite a large man, but always had this like gentle giant type persona to him. He was always considered a really friendly and outgoing person. And he didn't really seem to have any enemies, at least no enemies that anyone knew about, which makes what happened to him kind of just all that more surprising. The last time that Cornelius' parents can say they saw him was on the evening of October 24th, 2016. He had actually been spending the weekend with his mom at their house, which I guess was on 41st and Ohio Streets there in Omaha. That last evening, they had gone to a movie, they got some dinner, they laughed. It was just a really fun evening for them. At approximately 1 a.m., he decides to leave uh, that house and walk towards his apartment, which was about three miles away. This was something he did all the time. Even at that late at night, he was, it was a very frequent thing. He actually really loved to walk. He preferred walking. He did have his own car at one point, but he always just took to walking places. Sometimes he would use a bike instead of walking, but, you know, he was more about the the active thing. <laughs> His mom, Diane, fell asleep. Uh, she was expecting a phone call from him when he got home, but it sounds like she either fell asleep before that happened or he, she just kind of lost track of time. And so the following morning, she tries to call him, but he does not answer. She doesn't really think a whole lot of it. Obviously, you know, he is, Cornelius is an adult and he could just be busy with doing other things. She tries calling him later in the day, still nothing. And at this point, that motherly instinct kicks in where she thinks something is something feels off. And so she will drive down to his apartment. She knocks on the door, gets no response. She has a spare key and she lets herself in. And it was very clear that Cornelius had not been there at all. It, it, it really did look like he never even got to his apartment that night, the night before. At that point, she goes to police to report her son missing. And then that same evening, uh, his mom and his father, family, friends, they all begin to not only be calling around to people like, you know, where can he be? But they're also literally on foot scouring the neighborhood. They're going from building to building, house to house. They're looking down all the streets. They walk the path that Cornelius would typically take. He always used the same route and they weren't having any luck. About a week later on October 30th, 2016, Diane is taking a break from looking and just taking, you know, a little bit of time and she's watching the news and she sees something absolutely horrifying. A body was found near the backyard of somebody's house on Hamilton Street. The body was decomposed. And according to the person who lived at that house, I, I guess they looked at it and assumed that it was a Halloween prank, that someone had just put some, you know, fake dummy or some kind of whatever, some kind of decoration in their yard. It's Halloween, of course, like that's, it's all over the place. There's decorations all over. And so thinking it was a prank, I guess they didn't really think much of it at first, but then when they begin to get closer to it, they realize that this was a human body. This was not a prank. This was not a decoration. This was a dead body. At that point, Cornelius's family uh, rushes to that house that they saw on the news. 
because they wanted to know if it was if it was Cornelius. Uh, his, you know, his mom had that feeling of that's got to be him, has to be him. The coroner would be able to determine pretty quickly that the body was, in fact, that of Cornelius Hodges. Cornelius's cause of death was a gunshot wound. There was no gun found near him, and where he was shot, they were really, they determined immediately that this was not like a suicide or anything like that. This was a homicide. Somebody deliberately killed him. I don't know. I'm, there's one thing I'm kind of confused on, uh, because based on the state of decomposition, it was pretty evident that Cornelius had been dead pretty much the entire time he was missing. So meaning that when he left his mom's house and was walking along Hamilton, he was accosted and killed. So he likely died the night he went missing. I, I'm, so I'm confused on like how no one, was the body there the whole time in that backyard and they just never went to their backyard to check? I mean, I mean, a lot of people don't go in their backyards every single day, so it's not completely unusual. You know, was he shot somewhere else and dumped there? Because it doesn't sound like anyone heard a gunshot that night. This was a, a neighborhood that's considered a really safe neighborhood and not one where they really have a lot of crime in. So that's just one part I'm kind of confused on and on how long was he in that backyard. But they did, they basically grilled the owner of that house. He had no connections whatsoever to Cornelius or Cornelius's friends or family. And police say they really looked into this person and everyone who lives in that house. And they said that you know, none of them were considered suspects or persons of interest. It just so happened to be their yard that this body was found. It sounds like the family believes that Cornelius was killed by someone who maybe had seen him on this walk home before. And they just don't know if it's someone he knew or if it was a stranger. Like, was this maybe someone trying to rob him? Was this a random thing that just they saw him and they killed him? It's really, really unclear. But he did that same walk all the time. And so, and also usually at that time, a lot at that time of night. So it could be someone who did see him frequently and for whatever reason decided to kill him. But what that motive is, is completely unknown. They have zero persons of interests. They have zero suspects. They have absolutely no idea who did this and why. They have gotten some tips and some leads, but it's really been kind of far and few between. And like I said at the beginning, Cornelius didn't have any enemies. He usually kept to himself. He was a relatively kind of quiet, peaceful type personality. He didn't ruffle any feathers. He got along with everyone. There was no like jilted exes or anything like that. This was just a regular guy, a regular really good guy who was just killed and no one knows why. And this actually wasn't even the first time that someone in this family was murdered because I guess a couple of years prior, um, Cornelius's older brother was also murdered. But from what I understand, they there's no connection between these two murders. It's just two very unfortunate tragedies in this family. And so now the family and police, they just wanna know what happened and they want justice to be done. Cornelius, didn't deserve this. It could not have happened to a nicer guy, but someone, as of today, I'm filming this in 2024 in August, someone has gotten away with this murder. This was a murder, a homicide. Somebody out there deliberately made the decision to point a gun at Cornelius's body, pull the trigger, and killed him. And somebody somewhere out there has got to know the truth because people who do these types of things, they love to talk. And maybe you're afraid to come forward because they'll retaliate against you. Well, you can always report your information anonymously. You never have to say who you are. You just have to say what you know. This family deserves that. They deserve those answers. They deserve that closure. They deserve that justice. So if you have any information about the murder of Cornelius Hodges, please call 402-444-5656 or you can call Omaha Crime Stoppers at 402-444-STOP. There is currently a $25,000 reward for any information that helps capture his killer. So if you need to be motivated by money, uh, there is money out there. But please, if you know anything, please report your information to the police so that Cornelius and his family can get the justice they all rightfully deserve. 
But that is it for this case. True crime, Aruni, Dooney, Dingleberry Dogs. It's kind of a shorter one. There was not a whole bunch of information on this case, unfortunately. But if you are new here, hello, my name is Mike. I tell true crime stories and sometimes spooky stories here on this YouTube channel. So feel free to subscribe if you like that kind of thing and give the video a like so more people can see it. The more people that can see this particular video means it might reach a larger audience who you know, might get to the right eyes to help solve this case. You never know. I also have a couple of different TikTok pages that you can follow. Uh, the links to those are in the link tree in the description of this video below. I just hit 500,000 followers on my uh, second page and I got 2.9 million on the original one. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, also in the link tree in the description below, you'll find my merch store. We have like t-shirts and hoodies. We ship all over the entire world. So feel free to check that out if you like. And then lastly, if there is a case you want me to cover or a spooky story like a haunted house, alien story, monster story, whatever, uh, just send me a quick email. My email is listed below. Um, just send me like the name or the name of the case or the story where it happened, when it happened, that kind of thing. And I'll add it to my list. The list is 6,300 plus names. I pick my cases at random each time. So I cannot promise you when I'll cover that case, but I will get to it eventually. But that is it for this video, True Crime Roonies. We shall see you for the next one. Ta-ta for now.